welcome back to Vehicles TV. Now what is automobile tuning exactly? What, what is it when we talk about tuning? Well, when we talk about this, we usually mean making cars and other vehicles look better, perform better, and handle better. Engine tuning, suspension tuning, body tuning, interior tuning, these are the four primary categories of tuning and customizing vehicles. Tuners, workshops, and manufacturers frequently do not specialize on a single form of tuning. Adjustments to one owns car are made simultaneously across the numerous tuning sub-areas in order to satisfy the tuner's particular preferences. The first of which being tuning the engine. This is the drastic remedy which involves removing the old engine and replacing it with a more powerful one which is one of the most common things to do. But this does not really qualify as tuning. Tuning is actually enhancing the details, expanding or fine tuning existing components to increase their output. Now the conventional increase in displacement is just one starting point. You can bore out the cylinders and this creates room for larger pistons that generate greater power. But it doesn't have to be that difficult. Turbochargers you don't need to take apart the engine for, and in diesel engines they offer more torque and consequently more power. A 20% increase is typical if you're being conservative, and with a professional design it allows for 50% increase. Retrofitting a supercharger is also effective, but it's more common in gas engines. You don't get a lot of supercharged diesels. These forms of forced induction supply more air by using a compressor and this promotes combustion which increases power. Now maintenance is also an excellent way to tune your engine, though that's a bit of a stretch of the definition. But cleaning or replacing the air filter on a regular basis is advised as it can allow for better airflow and just changing the oil in general will allow your engine to last longer and keep better compression for more horsepower. Chip tuning can also be done and this doesn't even need a screwdriver. Tuners can alter the engine's computer by enabling increased torque for example or or doing other stuff with the engine which increases power and drivability. Now the next way to modify your car is by tuning the suspension. The suspension of an automobile is designed to appeal to the broadest potential audience. It's meant to be comfortable and handle bumpy roads well, which is not to everyone's liking. Suspension tuning or the alteration of suspension components is thus an essential aspect of a tuner's daily operations since they want their car to handle better rather than to be more comfortable. Suspension tuning has proven to be extremely effective. Adjusting the suspension improves the car's handling and the looks. As a result, it's easy to tell when a car has suspension tuning, though engine tuning is usually kept a secret since it's hidden under the hood. Now when we talk about lowering, this is the process of lowering the vehicle's body. In the tuning world, a lowered car is a classic basically because it just looks sportier than the factory version in every case. But what's the point though? Okay, what is the point? Well, the basic concept is that lowering a car lowers its center of gravity, i.e. the mass is distributed at a lower point, which means the car can handle better. It actually rides smoother and more sportily on the roads, especially when you're going through a turn. But lowering your car does have a couple of drawbacks, particularly in congested areas. This means you have a lower field of vision and curbs and bumps might constitute a huge bump. Of course, most tuners are happy with this. They have a few alternatives for getting their suspension closer to the pavement. Installing lowering springs is the simplest and least expensive. Coilovers and sport suspensions are more complicated, but they provide bigger rewards. Lowering springs are more compact and stiff than normal springs and as a result the vehicle rolls and pitches less and responds to the steering signals more swiftly. Spring replacement should always be done in conjunction with shock absorbers. This is because the conventional springs are aligned with the conventional shock absorbers and if you change the spring you're going to have two mismatched parts. Now the phrase sports suspension is used by tuners to denote suspensions that have a stiffer spring and a stiffer shock absorber combination than a series suspension. Standard sport suspension are designed for drivers who want a sporty look and feel without really sacrificing their comfort. Many aftermarket manufacturers will sell an entire suspension system. Four shorter shock absorbers and adequately tuned lowering springs are normally included in a suspension kit which improves the handling. Now this is all great, okay, engine tuning, suspension tuning, 
But what other factors should you consider when tuning your car? Well, first thing is you should be cautionate. Anyone who tunes their car without constraint is putting themselves in danger. Every part you add to your car after it has been modified can result in the expiration of your operating license and as a result significant fines. You may also be prohibited from driving the vehicle on public roads if you live somewhere where modification is illegal. Expert evaluation of the car's constructional measures can prevent this, but how do you get the green light? A part certificate or an ABE may be useful in this situation. With safely related car parts, a part certificate is usually included. However, this does not imply that the part has been correctly installed, especially if you're doing it with no experience. That means driving your car with this part installed could be a road safety risk. And because of this, it is important to have an installation inspection performed by a competent authority. After installation, the professionals there check the components and vehicle's functionality and see if it was installed correctly. If the test is positive, you can submit the modification inspection certificate to the appropriate registration office and the changes will be recorded in the registration certificate there. Now, it is not always necessary to have a part certificate. If a part comes with an ABE certificate, it specifies the vehicle models that it can be fitted on. It's not required to have a new expert check after tuning, but you must be able to demonstrate the ABE at a traffic control. The next thing to be cautionate about is that excessive tuning can put your funds for the next tuning meeting or for those much desired trendy aluminium rims at danger. Because when it comes to unlawful tuning, the state is serious. But what automobiles are the most suitable for tuning? This is maybe the most important question. Well, this is actually an extremely challenging question. It's really impossible to answer with a simple ranking list. Tuners' preferences are far too diverse and they also are subjective. Professionals are experts in a variety of models, of course. The language you use and the people you speak with will have an impact. As a result, German automobiles are more popular in Germany, French cars are more popular in France, and Japan has its own vibrant automotive culture. However, there are a few criteria that you should follow. If you want to modify your car aesthetically, German models are preferred because they come looking the best. There is a vast choice of wheel rims, seats, and spoilers, for example, for the popular manufacturers like Audi, BMW, Ford, Opel, and VW. The air is a tad thinner for Fiat, Peugeot, and Renault, and just because the tuning parts are made in Japan doesn't make them any less expensive. Small turbocharged cars are particularly well suited to low cost engine tuning. These models such as the Gulf 4 Turbo can be dressed up for a modest price. Popular models include the Mazda MX-5 Miata, Toyota Supra, and BMW N54 engines. But there's many more specialists, many viewpoints, and that's why the tuner community's straightforward recommendation is to just tune the car that you like the best. But where do you get tuning accessories and parts? This is something you should probably think about before you buy your car. It's best to hunt for the proper accessories for your own tuning car in a tuning business that specializes in tuning. Of course, you may look for deals on eBay classifieds as well, but when it comes to your own safety, you should know who you can trust. Furthermore, the product selection is extensive and sometimes complicated. It's helpful to have a flexible dealer on hand if a part needs to be returned due to improper assembly. In addition, some parts also require a part certificate or general operating permit, so it's comforting to learn that this is included in the delivery. Tuning shops online. Anyone who makes an internet purchase should exercise extreme caution. The officials warn that inexpensive copy parts are available, particularly on the internet. Reputable vendors supply products with all of the required certifications and permissions, even test reports according to the officials might be falsified. Now what does a tuning workshop entail? Now obviously you can perform a lot of the tuning yourself. Minor paintwork, foil wrapping, and windscreen tinting are examples of these jobs. When it comes to engine tuning or suspension and bodywork adjustments though, you'll kinda need expert knowledge. You can demonstrate your abilities in a workshop for hire if you have the relevant knowledge but no equipment. All others should seek the assistance of a tuning shop. This is also true when safety critical components are being tweaked such as the suspension. Many tuning shops get their knowledge from the parts manufacturer or the car maker directly. The workshop experts are delighted to benefit from this unique knowledge advantage. Now here are some important tuning events and fairs. 
The first is Track Days. A track day is a free driving event held on a track that has been closed to the public for this occasion. This might be a racetrack like the Nürburgring or tarmac from a decommissioned airfield. Really, any large pavement works. In any of these events, public traffic is kept out, and for once, the rules of the road are finally ignored. A track tool, or a car specifically modified for this purpose, is not required for all track days. Basically, anyone who can drive a tuned car can participate. There's also meetups for tuning enthusiasts. Tuning meetups are primarily about bringing the scene together. While automobile manufacturers and tuning firms dominate the major trade shows, tuning meetups bring the community together. If you're a tuner, practically every meeting and some larger events will allow you to display your car on the podium and on the track. Tuning automobiles range from meetups for old and young timers to small cars of a certain brand to large 1,000 horsepower bow leads. The meetings represent the community's diversity, visit, and be impressed. So when are you planning to tune your car and how? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.